Hey guys, I wanted to go ahead and talk with you guys about how the CVT in this vehicle actually behaves compared to, let's say, others. Um, Subaru and Nissan actually get their transmissions, I think, from the same place, so that's kind of questionable, but Subaru seem to have a higher reliability rating than that of Nissan for multiple reasons. For one, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Subaru uses a chain belt instead, so it actually, I think, it increases the durability. But then again, too, who actually knows? I'm not a CVT expert. So the CVT in this vehicle actually behaves quite well, considering that um, it is made into a four cylinder, which is usually kind of like, oh shit, I'm gonna get the rubber band effect. But in this particular instance, this car actually eliminates it pretty well. The CVT in this vehicle, I think after one third throttle, is actually programmed to mimic shift patterns. And so this actually helps. Now, in this vehicle, along with the H6 models of the Impre not the Impreza, the Legacy and the um, and the Outback, it starts in an artificial second gear. However, if you were to get the Legacy four-cylinder model, for some apparent reason, they programmed it to start in an artificial first gear. So the shift point is gonna be a little bit different when you actually come off of a stop, depending on which model you actually have. So I'm gonna go ahead and first do an acceleration at one-third throttle or more to show you guys the actual shift points of the CVT. But basically, um, it also will behave like a normal CVT if you are below that one-third mark and ultimately are not giving a bunch of throttle input. So as you can see, it's behaving like a normal CVT, or not a uh, traditional automatic transmission. And basically, this is to make people like me who hate CVTs like them a little bit better. But then again, too, it's really hard to get used to it due to the fact that it behaves differently after every single acceleration you do. You do tend to get a little bit of a rubber band effect, but Subaru did a pretty good job at actually eliminating it. So, like I said, depending on which CVT you get, you may like it in one car and completely hate it in another. For example, I hated it when I drove the Impreza, but I love it in this particular vehicle. So I'm gonna accelerate a little bit more lightly, and as you can see, the CVT is now behaving like a normal CVT. Those pulleys are just gradually shifting, whereas before, it would actually sort of bump the pulleys into certain ratios, that way it can mimic gear patterns. And so now, as you can see, we were able to accelerate at 1500 RPMs with no problem whatsoever. And the car ultimately picked out pretty well. This is the whole point of the CVT. The CVT is to allow you to the lowest RPMs possible with the infinite amount of ratios, which ultimately allows you to save fuel and accelerate a little bit faster if needed. So with that, we'll do a light acceleration and then we'll do another sort of harder acceleration. We'll start off light. God, we still have fireworks going on. Oh, yeah, by the way, we had an earthquake today in Las Vegas, but everybody, you know, is freaking out. But it actually originated somewhere in California, so I think it was by Bakersfield, some 6.9 earthquake that just happened, so. Yay, shaking it up. <laughs> we were in the car, and I was like, my partner goes, are we moving? And I was like, no, not really. Are you dizzy? And he goes, no. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, yeah, we are moving. We're having an earthquake. So we just kind of, you know, did whatever. It wasn't even that long. If it was that long, we didn't even notice it for a good portion of its life. But basically, they had a 6.9 magnitude earthquake and somewhere along the lines of Bakersfield. So we felt it over here. So a little bit lighter acceleration. As you can see, we are getting this to behave just like a normal CVT at this point. Yeah, there are some fluctuations, but that also depends on throttle input. But as you can see, the RPMs stay pretty constant when it's behaving at light, or when it's behaving like this at light throttles. This is how a traditional CVT is supposed to act. Now, let's say for example, I needed to accelerate a little bit harder. As you can see, 45 miles an hour, I need to just go a little bit faster. The car will jump into its artificial gear pattern right away to give you that sort of like, ooh, I'm not driving a CVT anymore. Like my panties are wet. So um, with that, folks, again, the CVT does behave differently in each model. However, it does behave well in the Outback. So if you are looking for an Outback, I definitely would recommend it just due to the fact that it drives incredibly well, uh, even paired with the CVT transmission. And so the older CVTs that you hear in the older Outbacks are nothing compared to these ones. These ones are a lot better, a lot more refined, and ultimately they distribute the power a lot better to the wheels versus in the traditional CVTs that you had before, it was always some sort of rubber band lagging effect. So then you run into the issue of the engine going up, but then the transmission and the wheels are not catching up with it. So that's basically 
what the issue was with the previous models, along with, you know, every other CVT out there, Nissan, Toyo Toyota especially, good lord, their Corolla CVT is hor horrendous. So, with that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. But again, the CVT is a good pair for this car. Do I like it? It's okay. It's not my favorite, but it's not necessarily something that's horrible. So, uh, just keep, take that with a grain of salt. I mean, I am pretty biased in terms of my transmissions. I do have a six-speed auto right now, and I'm trying to get into a manual if they ever buy back my car. Hyundai finally fixed my car. It was a mo it was the motor mount stopper bear or stopper mount or rubber stopper that I have told them three times to replace, and now they were like, "Oh, I think it's the motor mount. We found a lot of TSBs on it." And I'm like, "No shit, Sherlock. You could have just saved me a bunch of attorney stuff." But no, now I'm getting compensation for my troubles. So with that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video on how the Subaru Outback of this generation, uh, it's how its CVT performs. Again, it's not always definite. Some CVTs do perform a little bit different than others, but this one should be pretty constant around the board, considering the fact that this programming was present starting in 2015 and is possibly going further into the 2020 Outback. I believe the 2020, though, simulates eight ratios, so the ratios will be a little bit closer. So that's about it, folks. I'm going to go eat my Dairy Queen and uh, go to bed. So I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.